Uh, hi everyone, my name is King IV and this is a custom ACL workshop and in today's video I'm going to be talking about my most favorite features in ACL 11 uh, that have come out since ACL 11.3 and obviously if there's other features that come out after that this video will be before then so I'll probably do an update video probably after three more sub releases uh, depending on what actually comes out and if there's actually anything interesting to to comment about so some of the features and functions are, are most of these are fairly simple uh, but I find really useful some great time savers and every every second every minute counts as you're building out these analytics so the ones I'm going to talk about are going to be the find function improvements to that uh, regular expression find regular expression replace workday dice coefficient our dice uh, yeah dice coefficient and as well statistics within summarization and classifications. So let's get started. So on the find function, what I used to have to do is when I want to find the word Toronto, for example, I would have to type it out like this. But now what I simply can do is just type the word Toronto. If I want to find Toronto Zoo, for example, I would have to I would type I would type in both and it would do an or statement automatically but I can also make it do an R an and statement so I can see where there's Toronto Zoo together you can also do it to find numbers for example so here you can go find 13 find or find 13.2 which then just treats it like a string there are some instances where where it doesn't work as well but for the most part I find it's a great time saver uh, nifty little function uh, that makes things a little bit different than they what they were before so it really gets down to what the purpose of your doing this analysis or filtering your data for so pretty simple one uh, more complex version of this find function is this what we call regular expression reg x find uh, and in reg x find it allows you to you utilize all these regular expressions that are available within ACL like common uh, metadata or meta characters that are available. So things like a dot means any character, a star meaning more, 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 zero or more occurrences of the immediately preceding character or element. Uh, things like a lot of the ones I like to use are this forward slash s and forward slash d. So forward slash d allows you to find any numeric numbers. And then for size S allows you to find any blank spaces. So, and then capital versions of those are, are opposite, which is slightly confusing. And then here you have these boundaries, which are, are pretty neat. The start or end of a string, which is you can utilize for your find function. So I'm going to do some pretty simple examples. And not to say that there, there aren't more complex ones, but say, for example, on merchant name, it's a common one that I do is I want to find all the merchant names that have numbers in them. So, oh, okay, I misspelled merchant name. There you go. So here, I might be able to find these merchant names, and the re reason I would care about this is that uh, when you're looking at TNE or travel entertainment expenses or employee expenses and you're trying to run duplicate analysis what you don't want to do is is to not not have the opportunity to try to normalize your vendors so that you can get rid of these store numbers because someone might expense something to Lowe's and then and then do that same expense it might do Lowe's store number zero two six four zero and it would be more difficult to actually find those and you might be able to catch those when you run your fuzzy duplicate analysis or when you do your dice coefficient analysis but I find this is just a, an easy way of, of getting rid of that so a really handy really useful uh, I'm also going to show you another example uh, let's go over to purpose so here I'm just gonna get rid of these I was just previewing some of the upcoming features I'm gonna be using so here you can use purpose and before, if I want to find home and stores, I would have to treat those as two different expressions and then combine those together, either or and. And then here, what it does is automatically does an or. 
of these of these two so it makes it super simple to filter your data so you can see home is here stores is here uh, I think it was a really good and nifty feature that that can be used a uh, feature that we're going to use that's going to be pretty similar is going to be this regular expression replace. So here I'm just going to mock up some example. And I'll send a link with uh, with this data as well. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this purpose field and change all the blanks into uh, three, three blanks. And the expression I'm going to use this for is that sometimes when you're doing this analysis, uh, you'll often see that not everything's separated by one space and sometimes it's separated by two, three, four, and just makes it really difficult to, to manage. Not saying that previously you couldn't, but now what you can do is use take advantage of this meta characters and I'm going to show you how we're going to do this so here we're going to use this uh, regular expression replace and we're going to look at purpose modified and we are going to find whenever there's a, a, a blank here an S and then we're going to use this plus sign to indicate that could be any number of spaces and then we're going to replace those with just one space. So there's modified. And then here we're going to do the clean version, which will then get rid of all the multiple spaces. And it doesn't matter whether or not there's two spaces, three spaces, four spaces, one space, five spaces. This is just more universal. Before what I had to do, what I had I had to use a replace, find two spaces, replace it with one. And then put it around that, replace, find two spaces, replace it by one. And this is just a great time saving feature that is available. Another nifty function is this workday. And this basically calculates uh, Monday to Friday. And I'm sure you can customize it further. Let's take a look. And then here you can let indicate any other non non working days uh, that are are applicable or what actually makes sense uh, from there. So here, for example, if I want to figure out how many how many of these between the Tor city of Toronto transaction day uh, and when they actually posted, it was which is roughly when they submitted it, uh, were over thirty working days, which is six weeks roughly. Uh, so there we're going to go work day and then all we have to do here is is list out the two fields and then we're going to say more than 30 and you'll see here some examples of where there were more than 30 days and you can do for example more than 200 200 days and you can see ones that have uh, a pretty big gap you can see here this one's over a year long so what was happening here is there some issues you can see here some uh, netflix.com lots less quite a few websites so it's uh, interesting to see as well so really neat function you can use it to calculate the number of working days as well so here we can go field working uh, days find field working days computed and then we're going to use this work day and then we're going to list at the start field so I'm just going to take it from my log and then we can check out that obviously you can do some simple like stratification so here we can enter our minimum and maximum but 10 Maybe calculate the subtotal of number of days, do some quick analysis, and then you can see here, uh, majority of the transactions are within uh, nine working days, which is actually good. That's like within two weeks. Uh, but you can see here, there's a couple of them are that are over 100, 
A lot of them are negative transactions, which is an indication of like credits, uh, which which again makes sense. Uh, but you can use this analysis to automatically run these different filters, these different analysis to to be able to pick and choose what you actually want to sample on a more intelligent basis. Okay, so next thing we want to do is we want to use this dice coefficient analysis, and oftentimes I use this. Essentially, what it does is it calculates how similar are two strings to one another. And then the way we're going to do that is we are going to basically do a duplicate analysis around it. So here I'm going to take the PCART transactions. I'm going to summarize simply by this merchant name and I call it merchant sum. I'm going to pre-sort open. So you can see here some analysis and what I'm going to do, and this is going to be a little bit complicated and actually I'm going to leave this for a separate video just because I think this part's going to probably going to take like 10 minutes and essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through these, uh, these fields to try to find all the, the matches that are available, but stay tuned. I'll probably post it next week or, or later today. Um, today as in May 30th, 2015. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip that and move on to statistics within summarization. So here I'm going to show you how to do it in the, using the GUI. So here, say for example, we wanted to do on, we were on run some analysis on division, uh, how much it was spent. Uh, maybe number of working days between by division and then just all you have to do is simply here is conclude statistics in the subtotal field and then here we're just going to call it division sum and it's very simple to script as well so you'll see here that not only do you get the total but you also get the average the minimum the maximum the total number of working days the averages the counts lots of these good really good um, statistics that are can be really useful to help drive some of your analysis to understand what are the outliers. Uh, so for example here, you might want to do a ratio of like maximum to average to see or whatever the, the number is at relative to the average to understand whether or not there are any outliers. So some really good analysis that you can perform. Another uh, quick one or uh, uh, quick analysis that you can perform and it's uh, really similar. Actually, I'm going to script this. So I'm going to take away this. It's simply you can just run a classify on it as well. So here we're just going to do a merchant name, subtotal, transaction amount uh, to merchant sum, pre sort, open. And then all you have to do is type the word statistics at the end. No, oh, I might have, this might not be called dots, be called trans amount short form. Replace that. And that's the same way that you do it for, oh no, sorry, we don't summarize, <laughs> pre sort on classification. But you can see here, pretty simple. You can add all these additional fields, analysis, to see what actually makes sense. Obviously, if it's a count of one, it's not going to be that big a deal because the average, minimum, maximum, and even the total are exactly the same when it's just one. That's just the rule of math. But you can see here some analysis. Uh, you might, for example, want to get rid of where they're negative because it looks like it's throwing off some analysis. Uh, but you can see here, for example, Commonwealth Brick. Uh, we have City of Toronto purchased three transactions. And this actually probably aligns to the exact three as well. But you can do some quick analysis. That was a super simple ad uh, for ACL to add in a no-brainer, um, but it really enhances your understanding and analysis. So I'll post a video on how to do dice coefficient because it's a little bit complicated and it's probably going to take another 10 minutes and I don't want to bore you as, as you're looking through it. Okay, perfect. So check, look for the next video if you have any questions, comments, uh, feel free to add them below. And I look forward to speaking to you next time. Thank you.